Speed kills those that don't have any. Coach Sage of SageRunning.com here with another training talk. Today we're going to talk about balancing high intensity and speed training uh, with long, slow distance, lower intensity training. And it's, it's the age old question, you know, you're balancing these two stresses, what percentage of your weekly mileage should be high intensity speed training under the lactate threshold or over about 85% max heart rate, things like that. And I'll get into some of the variables because uh, it could be a really long-winded topic. All right, so speaking of topics, we've covered this type of uh, training talk before. You can check out an extensive playlist, training talk videos, marathon training, half marathon training, ultra marathon training, 5K, 10K, even mile training, 1600 meters, 1500 meters, things like that. Thanks to the, for subscribing too. But And also at the end of this video, you can comment below the future training talk topics and vote up comments that you want to hear more about. But let's dive right in. All right, so first of all, on some variables that determine the percentage of quality work you may be doing, uh, intense work based on your weekly mileage totals. Uh, and it does depend on your weekly mileage totals. So that's one, you know, what, how many miles per week, how much week you're running. Another factor is age, not just a uh, chronological age, but your age in running, how long you've been consistently training, uh, whether you start running later in life or start running as a child things like that. The other main thing, key thing, probably the number one thing, is the event you're training for. <laughs> Obviously, if you're training for 800 meters, 1500 meter a mile, you're probably gonna do more track and speed work than if you're training for a 100 mile ultra marathon or even a marathon for a lot of people. And speed may have a different meaning in the context of your training as well as other cross training you might do that might be of high intensity nature, strength training, things like that. The other key individual differences in genetics, injury history, uh, how susceptible you are to like things like tendonitis or stress fractures, uh, body weight composition, musculature, fast twitch to slow twitch muscle fiber ratios, individual strengths and weaknesses that could get hurt more in training a certain way. Now there's general principles uh, with successful marathon training programs, for example, that are going to work definitely for most people. But when you get to the nitty gritty modifying certain speed workouts, sometimes in a taper phase or something like that, people respond a little bit differently, as well as our main differences in durability, running form, running efficiency, running economy, and how we need to train our weaknesses more early season, off season, than focus on our strengths, capitalize on our strengths later on through a training cycle before tapering and before a race. So final variable there is periodization in training. How your training changes over a period of weekly blocks, week, weeks at a time, months at a time, even years at a time with things like developing your aerobic base first with generally lower intensity training, conversational pace like what I'm doing now, you know, slower than 75% of max heart rate, uh, really easy running to build up mileage consistency then adding in higher harder high intensity workouts as you go through a training phase to uh, tire yourself out but also to develop a uh, tolerance to lactic acid improve your ability to clear lactate uh, but then just in general get your legs stronger stimulate fast twitch muscle fibers get your legs calloused to the muscle force that you need to run a, through a strong 10K or half marathon or ultra marathon, whatever you're training for. So uh, get into more of that. All right, so basically every successful distance running program, probably starting with Arthur Lydiard back in the day, going through Renato Canova now, Jack Daniels, Pete Fitzinger, uh, Steve Magnus, Brad Hudson, <laughs> influential coaches, over the years, my college coach, Robert Rojo Johnson, let's run.com, uh, start off with an aerobic base building period, right? You're running, you're building your mileage up, building up your volume. You're doing a lot of 
all aerobically based running, which means lower intensity, slower than the lactate threshold. There's no anaerobic contribution. So a lot of conversational pace, easy pace, pulling the mileage up so you don't get hurt, right? Canova called this the fundamental period. You may be doing, so you may be sprinkling in some hill workouts, hill repeats. We do that a lot in our stage running training programs to build resistance, to build leg strength, uh, to get the cobwebs out of the heart and lungs. You do spike the heart and lungs at high intensities, but only for short periods of time and usually with full recovery. So you don't develop too much lactic acid, right? You don't want to burn the fire. Once you catch fire, you burn out. You need to control little bounce of speed intensity. And you're working to build resistance to injury, build resistance to fatigue, improve your strength, and get the aerobic system firing, right? You get a lot of good fat burning adaptations. Even if you eat a high carb diet, doing long runs, getting your mileage base up, still doing strides though, maybe some speed work, maybe even 400 meter repeats, but they're aerobic in nature. Fartlek workouts, timed intervals, still aerobic in nature, not true VO2 max workouts, call them pre VO2 max. Uh, so, and then a lot of tempo runs, aerobic threshold to lactate threshold, which in layman's terms is gonna be around marathon pace for most of you, maybe a little slower uh, to start off, because you go by current marathon projected fitness pace, right? Not goal pace, I'm talking about what you could run in a race right now. You have to be a little more conservative with that number and those thresholds. And then the goal is over time, maybe over a block of six or eight weeks or so, all of a sudden your 20 minute tempo run pace on flat, good surface, good conditions is faster. All of a sudden you're 15 seconds per mile or 10 seconds per kilometer faster at the same relative heart rate, same relative effort. And if you had a lactate test, uh, it would register the same lactate concentrations because you improved your fitness. You got a good training adaptation. That's really the goal of uh, this period in training. All right, so in this base phase, you are doing some intensity, right? Like I said, uh, some short speed, a lactic speed, not true anaerobic speed type of work. No gut busting to repeats, no gut busting 400s and 800s or VO2 max intervals. Uh, but you're doing some moderate stuff, 20 minute tempo run, maybe some up tempo runs, 10K up tempo run. So that counts as quality. So maybe 10, 15% of your weekly mileage, you're doing you know two hard workouts a week about. The rest of the days are all easy uh, in an easy long run, building the long run duration and distance up. So maybe only 10, 15% of your weekly mileage is quality, is high quality, high intensity. That includes all the you know, fast hill repeats, drills, strides, uh, explosive stuff. Then as you shift into what Canova would call specific period or you know, Jack Daniels phase two, phase three, uh, Pete Fitzinger, you know, specific marathon training or peak specific event training focused training for the demands of the race you're targeting, you start doing uh, VO2 max workouts. You know, repeat kilometers, repeat 1600 even. You're doing tempo runs, tempo efforts, two mile repeats, three kilometer repeats, uh, even five kilometer repeats and three mile repeats for marathoners with a short rest. And you're crossing the lactate threshold. You're crossing, getting over 85, 90% of max heart rate is really the key. For extended periods on time, you're developing some lactic acid, that burning feeling in your muscles. Uh, and it hurts, it hurts. You're doing hard workouts, you know? Eight, out of eight to nine out of 10 on the pain scale. Not totally all out, but the very hard workouts, demanding sessions, is a specific training period. And again, depends on the event you're training for. But even then, even if you're doing three quality workouts like this a week. One of them might be a harder long run. One of them might be a tempo workout. Another might be a track interval session. You're having these easy days in between. And most of your easy day mileage is still a lot longer than a session of six to eight by a kilometer, right? That's only six to eight times a kilometer around 5K, 10K pace. You know, that's a, that's a tough workout. And it could be really tough if you run it really fast with a short rest, but it's, it's only six to eight kilometers of total volume 
maybe your weekly mileage is 80 kilometers or 50 miles that week. Uh, so, you know, maybe you do get up to about 20, even 25% of your weekly mileage that is under the threshold, higher intensity, but still the vast majority of it is easy recovery pace, recovery runs. And of course, there's an easy day spectrum in there. Uh, not all days are super easy for me. Most days are conversational. Some days if I feel good, you get in the realm of up tempo. Long runs are generally faster, a uh, little closer, still quite a bit slower than marathon pace, but uh, on average, maybe it's only 80% slower than marathon pace uh, for a lot of long runs. So, you know, those are hard efforts as well. All right, so at a certain level though, intensity, high intensity training, interval training, anaerobic influence type of stuff, plays huge dividends in your fitness. If you want really fast short-term gains to race a good 5K, you start burning up the track with 400 meter, 800 meter intervals faster than 5K pace, right? For short rest, you feel the burn, you feel the pain, you're gonna get in shape pretty quick. Four to six weeks, you could get near peak fitness, but it's not sustainable. It's not sustainable. You're gonna peter off after a certain period of time. You won't make long-term improvement without reestablishing easy pace mileage, aerobic base, consistent, higher mileage. Obviously you can't get hurt, uh, but the aerobic system is very powerful to keep being trained. Once you uh, catch fire, you're more likely to burn out. That being said, uh, you get a lot of bang for your buck with high intensity workouts. You just have to think of it in this, uh, you know, periodization time frame of your training when you want to peak. Uh, you're more likely to get injured, higher velocity running, your form breaks down, higher impact force, uh, even pushing easy days too fast, lead to a lot of injuries, tendonitis or recent injuries, as well as uh, just being really, really stressful mentally as well. A lot of painful workouts. So, you know, speed, fundamentally speed is very important, right? It's like Emil Zottopek said, you know, I already know how to run slow and long. I need to learn how to run fast. So we do a bunch of intervals. Because uh, speed, it does come down to speed at, at a certain point. But uh, generally, if you don't have that aerobic base, that long-term strength to sustain all that speed, it's going to be hard to continue with long-term improvement, things like that. Other benefits, high intensity speed work, of course, more powerful stride. You get a fast leg turnover, stride rate over 180 steps a minute. A lot of people get sloppy with that. When you're running slow, it's hard to get the stride rate up, but also a longer stride because you're running a lot faster, especially if you're doing hill sprints, you get a lot more power in your legs. Uh, amp up the metabolism for the rest of the day, right? Uh, burn a lot of calories as well as the aerobic benefits are really, you know, your cells respond at the cellular level. Uh, you could clear lactate better, heart rate spikes. You don't get out, as out of breath on hills, especially in ultras. You're just more efficient, theoretically more efficient, at submaximal speeds, because hopefully it boosts your running economy or efficiency. So speed training, high intensity training, definitely in set essential if you want to reach your peak. That being said, easy pace mod aerobic base is uh, underrated a lot. You need that base building if you want long-term improvement, if you don't want to get injured, if you want to reach your 100% max true potential. And it's going to take years to take years. That's why a lot of East Africans grow up running barefoot to and from school, 10K, 20K a day. They have this aerobic base for 10 years. <laughs> of uh, running pretty consistent high mileage, then by the time they're in their 20s, early 30s, they're world-class marathoners. That certainly helps, certainly helps to have that base. So then you could start reaching your potential, doing more specific training, depending on what event you're training for. All right, that's all I've got for now. Thanks so much to all the Patreon supporters for really making this possible, as well as all of you on here for watching these videos. Thumbs up if you like them, be sure to subscribe. Also, exciting announcement, Sandy created a women's first 50K plan. It's available on her website for free. She's, if you check her out on social media, at Sandy Nightpaver on Instagram, Twitter, you'll see the inspiration behind it. It's a great plan, great introductory plan. Uh, get more people in the sport, and we wanted to make it 
Our motto is athlete empowerment. So that's our hashtag. We're safe running, any service, any distance. But yeah, women's beginner 50K plan with a training guide for free on our website, sagerunning.com. Stay tuned for more training plans on there as well, as well as uh, more YouTube videos on here if you subscribe. Thanks so much, guys, and uh, see you next time.